and welcome to my thoughts on Channel Zero, which I thought was really good. I loved it. It was really, really good. Um, the first season was kind of creepy with the, the puppets. Um, they were really creepy and awesome. I loved them. And um, I think um, like the twist at the end was like the, the good brother was actually like the skeleton, the, the bad guy. Um, and I think maybe that's what he's told his daughter to tell his mom in order to like push her over the edge and, and get her to do what he asked her to do beforehand, which was kill him. And like at the beginning of the season, he also talked about how losing a twin is like losing a limb. And, uh, and then his brother was talking about how the skeleton guy was like a part of them. So it's kind of like they're all one. And I think that was kind of like the twist, um, so that the good guy was actually kind of the bad guy, actually, and he was actually the one sort of forcing his brother to do these things, maybe not on purpose, but I think that that's just my theory, and it might, and it's not even like a great theory, I don't, I don't even think, but that's my theory. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and also uh, th another good point about the season, this first season was that it was very pretty, with the dark, cloudy skies and the green fields and just the scenery and the atmosphere. It's really nice. Um, but still, season one wasn't that great. It was slow and it had these really weird, like needlessly long panning shots where it would go like... <sighs> and it just, it just, what was that? they don't need to be that long <laughs> and then the convo the conversations that people had I have in my notes says convos the convos um, while they did have drama like I said uh, they were also kind of strangely muted in the they were dramatic, but also strangely muted in the emotion that they had. I mean, like, there was that point where, like, the mom sliced her son with the knife after he told her that he killed his twin. And obviously that's very dramatic, and it's, it's good drama for a show. But then also, most of the time, when people talk to each other, there was, like, no music in the background, and everyone's vocal sort of tones were sort of really they all kind of sounded really 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 depressed and which I mean kind of that makes sense for the main guy because I think he kind of he was but everyone everyone just was not that animated in their speaking except for maybe the acting sheriff the, the, the girl who took over for the actual sheriff uh, she was a little more animated and a little more likable and yeah, she, she was cool so um, so that was season one, and it was only okay, but, so I'm really glad, though, that that didn't stop me from watching season two, because all three seasons are out now. Uh, season two is way better, like, um, it's, it's like, season one was like a, um, uh, like a 6.57, and then season two was like an 8.59. It was a lot better, and, like, the imagery was so beautiful and creepy and um like from the very start like they had all these beautiful creepy images like the, just the the house the no end house um that was like in the very first scene and it was just shot so dark and stark in contrast to like the surrounding suburbs in that first scene it was so beautiful and interesting and creepy um yeah so uh, and like the memories that were eaten, uh, I liked how they looked like pomegranates inside when they were broken open. They looked like they had pomegranate seeds inside and it actually looked kind of yummy, which is creepy, right? To think like, that actually looks yummy. <laughs> um, and some of the stuff they went through in the no end house before they got to the sixth or fifth or sixth door was really, all of that was really creepy and pretty too. Most of it was pretty and all of it was creepy and it was just so, all like the, 
just in general, the whole season was really haunting and creepy and just great. Um, and I, I like the very concept of the haunted house being like an organism that leads people in with psychological horror and then and it gets to everyone's weaknesses and they have to like overcome their inner demons and stuff. It's very cool. Um, yeah, and there was character development, there was actual character development, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, and I like each character basically, I mean each character had like one basic thing that they had to sort of overcome and even though each character had more than one quality, they were actually very well written characters um, with a lot of different character traits and, and interesting um, qualities. They were very good characters and each of them had like their one thing that they kind of had to overcome. Um, like the main character had to sort of overcome the loss of her dad and her friend had to overcome her her um just the way that she didn't ever like put herself you know out she didn't ever uh try that hard to support her friends um and then like one of them had like a confidence issue but that one didn't even last long and that was an interesting kind of twist i didn't expect that to happen um but <laughs> that was okay because it, it it did lend to the tension and to the plot. Um, and then like another character was like psychotic and sociopathic and but like is it the, there were other qualities to them as well and they didn't all overcome like their main thing but the ones that did got out and so that's cool and that's encouraging and that's kind of what movies are supposed to do they're supposed to kind of have the characters overcome something and then triumph in the end most of the time most movies should do that and there are some movies that it can be good without doing that why am i saying movies i i mean movies and tv shows right but um yeah and it's just that because they had just like one thing that was kind of like their one thing that their one character flaw that they had to overcome in this season it allowed us to kind of really explore that one thing for each character very deeply and so yeah we got to explore you know the main characters like a relationship with her dad really deeply and then the other characters sort of um fear it was like fear that kept her from being there for her friends. She was too scared to put herself on the line for her friends and she we got to explore that pretty deeply and saw her overcome that and um and let's see and the characters were actually fairly likable and they did but they did do some stupid things um which you know <laughs> So, so and, and they were kind of like the they were slightly like the typical teenage horror movie characters but still they were fairly likable and well written and and uh and i did i think my favorite was jules who was the main character's friend who had to learn to you know, be there for her, her friend um, I, I think she was my favorite because she had like this, it was really interesting that she had like this tumor of repressed traumas and she clearly was struggling with that, but it was just like so much and so repressed that she couldn't really, it, it didn't manifest into just one thing in the house, it was like this weird uh, ball, blob thing. Again, like we focused mostly on her learning, not dealing with that blob of, of repressed traumas, but learning to support her friend. Okay, there's a win. I'm gonna wait until it dies down. I'm gonna have to cut this part out. Okay, and then season three. Ah, season three was so good. Um, yeah, it really, it was so creepy. Just ceaselessly creepy. It really took it up to an 11 and just, wow. 
it was awesome. Um, just like all the images and, and everything was just so, so uncanny, you know? Like it was in Uncanny Valley, which is why it's creepy. That's, you know, like sort of the definition of creepy is that it sort of it lives in Uncanny Valley, you know? <laughs> Um, where it's, you know, somewhere between being, um, normal and scary, it's just, it's somewhere between those two, so it makes you very uncomfortable. Everything in here, not everything, some things were, like, for real, like, really scary. And then, but a lot of the imagery and stuff, like, um, the manifestation of Alice's schizophrenia, like, how it was smiling and sort of baby-faced and it had her face, I think, right? Um... And this, and, and yet it was like deformed and 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 had that strange baby voice, and so it it was somewhere between being harmless and scary, and that just makes you very uncomfortable, right? And there were so many things like that, and it was just ah, oh, it was amazing. Um, and then the main reason I loved this season was because it was very pro-vegan. It had a very, the moral of it was basically veganism slash vegetarianism. And I'll get to that. Um, but like, you know, from the very first lines, they're talking about how people in the meat factory had to remove cow's tongues. And so, you know, that's obviously, <laughs> that should make people think twice about eating meat. You know, that, that isn't that gross? Isn't that messed up? And then, um, obviously, like, the meat mogul family, if that makes sense, they were the bad guys, and they were eating people, and, you know, it obviously it forces you to think about what, what's really the difference between eating people and eating animals, so I like that. The, the bad guy even, just, like, on his ran one of his random killing sprees was using a cattle prod, so... Um, that should make you think a little bit, hopefully. <laughs> Who knows if it will actually make anyone think, but hopefully. Um, because he was pretty explicit, I feel like, a lot of the time. Um, you know, he said, he specifically, that, that bad guy specifically said, to me, you're just energy waiting to be converted into another kind of energy, calories. And that's basically how people see animals. And, and then he eats the guy. And... There was that scene where Zoe dreamed of eating the cat, and that was awful, you know? So that should make people think. It should. Um, and then they even had the this line, I hope you're not vegan. So they, they name-dropped veganism. <laughs> and that's actually... So I liked that, but then it was also kind of frustrating, because at the end, again, they went vegetarian. So I, I know... It's, it's, and I don't... I don't know if that's just because, I might as well just say it now, I don't, I don't know if that's just because they think veganism would be going too far and it would turn people off and, you know, so they're doing kind of that reductionism thing where they're kind of advocating for people to go vegetarian at least. Maybe that's kind of what they're hoping will happen with this? Or maybe they just think that veganism is too much of like a, a trendy kind of buzzword. These days so they didn't want to put that in there just because it sounds very like fad diety even though it's not a fad diet um or maybe they just thought that these characters in particular didn't make the connection between eating eggs and dairy and how that is harmful to the animals just as much or more than meat is. Maybe that's what they were saying with the ending. Um, but yeah, there were lots of other things. I have so many things listed that, you know, were vegan messages. Like, you know, the animal meat that they were set, sat, up, sat down to eat turned out to be human meat with the hand of the mom with that purple ring. And there are more complicated things like uh, Zoe you know, when she started having these extreme cravings for meat, um, she would rather eat herself than eat others. So she was vegan at heart the whole time. 
There was uh, that thing that they called God, you know, and that thing was clearly the devil or some sort of demon, and um, and it made them crave meat and kill and eat meat, and so that's obviously the things that the devil would do, and that's just like how people often say, you know, they can eat meat because God, because God, basically. And the thing is, like, I'm Christian, and I believe in God, and I believe in Jesus, but Jesus never said you should eat meat. Never. And all the things that he said, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, love each other, love your neighbor as yourself. And animals are also our neighbors on this planet. And just like, uh, you know, he even said that if your donkey falls in a ditch, and it's the Sabbath, and you're not supposed to do any work, who among you is not going to get down there and help your donkey out of the ditch even though it's the Sabbath and you're not supposed to do any work and that's one of the Ten Commandments. So basically Jesus said that animals are more important than one of the Ten Commandments. So of course they're more important than all the other little verses that people try to use to justify eating meat because God, because God. And it's, and it's clear, and, and these same people, I mean often when they're asked, you know, if Jesus and the devil and a lamb were all in a room. Um, who would kill the lamb? Would it be Jesus or the devil? It would be, it would, it would obviously be the devil and not Jesus. And yet still people seem to think that God wants them to eat meat. So that was very, that was like a very um, true, I want to say metaphor, but it's not, I don't know if it is really, but like just how these, this, this meat eating family worshipped God, who was actually the devil, and obviously, you know, <laughs> obviously it's he's the devil, but they think of him as God. And then all, okay, and also when Alice, when they, um, they, uh, they chased down the little girl who they were going to sacrifice to the devil, or as they call him, God. <laughs> Um, and, and they laid her on, like, the altar, and they were waiting for him to come out and eat her, and she said, will it hurt her? I mean, obviously, the viewer's gut reaction is, like, who cares? <laughs> I mean, what's important is that you're killing her. She, she's asleep, and supposedly it's not gonna hurt her to be eaten, but she clearly doesn't want to die. <laughs> she's been running away, trying to save her own life for the whole season and it shouldn't matter if it's gonna hurt her I mean it shouldn't make it okay just because it's not gonna hurt her because you shouldn't be killing her and that was like my gut reaction and that should be everyone's gut reaction and hopefully that will make them think a little bit about whether even if we did kill animals while they were like asleep or something so I mean we shot them in the back of the head so that they didn't feel anything or whatever then it's still not okay. Um, you know, even if someone can't feel pain, if they have a desire, if they have a desire to live, like the girl clearly did, you have no right to kill them. That's what I wrote in my notes. And then, um, but then Alice did, and so Alice, like many people, chose her own comfort over the life of an innocent being and she got her worst fear in return for that and so that's you know hopefully that will make people think too again i don't know if it will but hopefully um because like it's this it's not super subtle but hopefully it's i mean and it's also it's also not like exactly on the nose so Hopefully it's just at that right spot that people will, that it will make people think because there's a lot of meat in here, a lot of eating animals and people, a lot of, yeah, a lot of human and animal meat and it, so it should be p making people think about human and animal meat while it's also exploring these other ideas and it's not like being super explicit about what it's saying but s still, I, I don't know, like I just talked about this with Ferdinand recently. I watched Ferdinand and I, my main concern with that was that it was probably too subtle with the message it was trying to put out there. 
Um, and it often is. Like, it's just... You have to be fairly explicit for people to really get that it, you're even trying to say anything, you know? With your movie or your show or whatever, because often people are not even trying to say anything. Um, they're just making a movie or a show for entertainment purposes. So what else supports the vegan message in this show? The, I think it was the sheriff or the police captain, I think it was probably the sheriff, I don't know. Anyway, he was the head of the police there and he killed his son and he, he said, I killed you because I wanted it to be quick, I was afraid of what they would do to you. Which, again, like, your gut reaction to that should be, you shouldn't have killed them at all, you should have found some other way. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, again, it's, it's, um, obviously it's worse to kill someone painfully, yes, but it's wrong to kill them at all. So you should have just not killed him, you should have just run off. Like, that's what they agreed to do at the end anyway, after he tried to kill his son the first time. <laughs> and, then he was, and then he came back around and he was like, okay, I'll, I'll help you instead kill the other people. <laughs> and then we can run away. Why didn't you just try and run away the first time? There's almost always another way out besides killing people or animals, so. And then I want to talk just finally about... The characters because obviously I love the vegan ideas that it's putting out but also the characters are actually really well written as well they, you know they have their struggle with schizophrenia and Alice um, she she starts out as our main character basically and she and it's so it's interesting because she's very likable at first she wants to help it, other people and she uh, is you know, trying to take care of her sister, and she's got all these struggles with, like, her student loans, and and she's also, you know, multi-layered, because, like, like that guy said, um, the guy who had a crush on her, like, she kind of sneaks up on you because she seems so delicate at first, but then she actually has some bite to her, and so that's cool. And so, you really like her at first, and, but, you know, but she, she clearly does have layers to her and like there's that line that she's where she's talking to Zoe about their schizophrenia and she said you know it's also environmental and I don't do the things you do with like a very sort of like judgmental tone which at the time only kind of endeared her to me more because you know Alice I mean she's clearly like a really nice person who at that point was trying to take care of other people and, and to, to help other people but also she you know she's not perfectly good she has like a judgmental side to her and so that just made her very multifaceted and interesting to me and so and so it is really interesting that we identify with her so much at first and she's our main character and we like her a lot and then she turns out to be kind of the bad guy, She's, you know, one of the bad guys, and so that's also kind of like, it goes with the vegan message because <laughs> you should be kind of identifying with this girl who then clearly makes the wrong choice and it should make you kind of think about if you make the wrong choices sometimes. <laughs> um, and like, I even thought the bad guys were very interesting, like the, one of the sons who like came into the hospital and he had like this dance scene basically it was really funny and interesting and he was very quirky and strange and even like the, the daughter-in-law was very the one who had like that whole speech about like the food chain and you know blah 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 <laughs> the food chain because of the food chain though that's why we eat meat <laughs> and, and if you watch her speech on that it obviously doesn't make any sense that we eat meat because like we're not part of the food chain, we're like, we, we, we live in unnatural ways. <laughs> we don't live, we're not part of like the natural system that's just supposed to like keep, you know, ecosystems in balance. We're unbalancing ecosystems and ruining the earth and stuff.
and I liked how Zoe and um Alice had like this sisterly bond you know that because of their mom who was not a good mother and you know that kind of that helped to endear both of them to us it was both Zoe and Alice because they were good sisters to each other Oh, and I also thought it was interesting, I, I liked how Alice was like clearly sort of desperate for motherly attention, even though she and her mother clearly have like a not a good relationship for obvious reasons. Um, she was desperate for motherly attention from her landlady at first, like she how she kept like going in and telling her landlady stuff that you might tell your mom, but you probably wouldn't tell your landlady, like having these conversations that she clearly wanted to have with someone <laughs> like who is kind of motherly. You know? And then you know, it turned out that's what she wanted most and that's what lured her in to like her doom. And I thought, you know, her, Alice's sort of absurd choices, her, her illogical choices, uh, you know, like Zoe said, she was so scared of losing her mind that she kind of just gave it away. And that I think is very sort of representative of what, of what a lot of, um, People do, especially when it comes to meat. This is a really long review already. Anyway, my only complaint about this season was that it was very hard to watch, sorry. I'm reaching the limit on how much re recording I can do. It was, it was hard to snack through. <laughs> okay, anyway, so that's my review. Thank you for watching and you can like and subscribe if you want and uh, so let me know what you thought about Channel Zero if you've seen it. and. Um, what you thought about any of my things that I had to say about it and uh, uh, Let me know what you think and yeah um, Thank you for watching again. Okay. Bye